linear timeline. And as such, we usually draw out a beginning somewhere on the left side of a page and we'll draw a line across the page, progressively getting to our modern time. We'll put little hash marks on that line to indicate you know, when a particular event happened. Um, Jordan recently made a claim in his video that I want to address specifically, but I think it's worth addressing not just to him, but to Christian apologists on YouTube, period. Because I see a lot of people thinking through the uh, foundation of our faith and how to get someone um, to understand this faith. Uh, in, in the same linear manner that Jordan, in my opinion, incorrectly presents. Uh, for instance, you know, one of my favorite YouTubers, and he blows me away any day of the week and deserves every subscriber uh, he has, but his is Noah, uh, Veritas48. Um, but I think one of the things that Noah does and that Jordan is kind of shooting holes in is he's presenting the human logical way of bringing someone step by step through a linear progression of faith. Starting with, in his case, most of his efforts are focused on just getting you to believe that there is a first cause, a creator God, and then, you know, progressively showing you that that's Yahweh and that he sent his son Jesus and so forth and so on. So this is in response to Jordan, but for a greater group of people um, that are out there trying to apologetically bring people to the faith and kind of see the model that I'm putting up and compare it with scripture and tell me what you think. Uh, first let me draw the flawed model that Jordan presents and I think it may or may not shock you Jordan to know that I agree with you uh, that it's a shaky flimsy uh, horrible foundation type model um, but you'll see why I believe that in a second. Jordan's claim is that the first five books of the Old Testament is the foundation of our faith. He calls it mud. Uh, another synonym for a shaky foundation scripturally is sand. On top of that, he says the Old Testament... Um, with all the minor and major prophets and the messianic prophecies is laid down here. So old T, O T right there. And then along comes Jesus. And according to Jordan's logic, he's resting on this kind of shaky rock here which is planted firmly in this muddy sand here. Um, and then on top of this we kind of have the early church, the book of Acts, early Christians, and that's supporting this modern church that we find ourselves in now. I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see. Okay, so Muddy, sandy, first five books, Old Testament, um, Messianic prophecies, uh, minor and major prophets, Jesus, uh, early church, and modern church. Um, d depending on how you want to look at how this structure could easily fail, you could easily, first of all, kind of topple over. Um, as you can see, you know, some sort of wind. Uh, could easily knock this over. Uh, but if you really visualize this muddy sand down here that Jordan's claiming is our foundation, it could also just sink and then topple over. So one way or the other, this structure is not sound, and I agree that it's not sound. Christ in Scripture talks about foundations quite a bit. Um, he tells a parable about two men, one being foolish, one being wise. The one being wise is the one that heeds the words of Jesus. And he builds his foundation, or he builds his home by digging down until he finds bedrock and he makes that rock his foundation for his home. The other man, uh, the foolish man, hears Jesus but just kind of goes and does his own thing. 
uh, builds his foundation on sand and then along comes this storm and this torrent and guess whose house gets swept away. Uh, another part of scripture, um, Christ asks Peter who it, is, who it is he believes that Christ or that Jesus is and he says you're the Messiah and Christ says and on that rock I will build my church. Uh, the fact that he's the Messiah is the rock that the church is built on. So, in my model, the foundation isn't this muddy, sandy uh, first five books that Jordan talks about. It's Jesus. Now, you may cry foul there because linear time models um, mean that I've skipped over everything that preceded Jesus. Well, one of the characteristics that we uh, use or that we claim God has is that he stands out time of outside of time and space so even though we experience this linear linear uh, type journey um, I don't think it's incorrect to put Jesus as the bedrock because a scripture says so and B um, with a God that stands outside of time you know this type of model could easily work but, you know, our experience started here, and we entered through this column or leg uh, before we got to Jesus, and we're, we're moving through it like this, okay? But this leg over here is that foundation, or is what Jordan called the foundation. Uh, but actually, the foundation is Jesus, and then we go through Jesus, and then we got this other leg over here, which is the early church leading into the modern church, okay? This model obviously is a lot more stable. You can even put a roof on this one. And maybe because God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, we can label the top of this, this model God. Um, as far as why this works for me personally as well, um, one only has to look at my testimony to see why I believe this to be the correct model. Because it wasn't the human logical progression or presentation that convinced me of this faith. No one came to me to first convince me that there was a first cause God creator and then showed me why that was Yahweh through the Old Testament and the five books, um, the Tanakh. And then the, they didn't take me up through Jesus and then they didn't show me from Jesus to now what doctrines have come up and what understanding we now have. It didn't work that way. Everything for me started in the person and the teachings of Jesus Christ, the foundation and the rock.